Welcome everybody, let's talk about social skills. Now, this is something that I think has been unbelievably neglected. This is something that you're not taught. People don't directly sit you down and go, look, here's a class all about social skills. Here's a class all about communication. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe your high school had it, but mine didn't. Years ago, I went and I visited one of my high school teachers. And I said, hey, so how are the kids doing? How are the students and whatnot? How are the, the new generation? And he said, Daniel, the, the grades are fine. The problem is communication. These guys need a class in small talk. That's what my high school teacher had said. And folks, the literature is very clear that people who are good at speaking, who are good, whatever you may call them, communicators, conversationalists, it aids you in almost anything you do. The easiest thing to think of is a job interview is anytime you're selling yourself, right? Or you're proposing an idea, you want people to listen to you. This might be your friends at a bar. This might be you're sitting in a job interview, you wanna get hired. This could be you wanna ask somebody out and you're trying to sell them, you're trying to sell yourself, not in a prostitutional way, but a little bit in a prostitutional kind of way, right? Because selling yourself doesn't just mean, oh, I'm, I'm selling you like a sexual favor, but selling yourself in terms of, look, this is who I am, this is what I have to offer. These are my characteristics, these are my mannerisms. <clears throat> and I'd make an argument that when two people meet on a date and they have intentions of going further, like being in a serious relationship, you're kind of selling yourself, right? You're kind of saying, look, here's what I am. Now the problem becomes if we have poor social skills, we don't do a very good job of presenting ourselves, right? It's the part where you're so humble that you don't talk about how much of a great person you are in the job interview or on the date because you don't want to come off as braggadocious or frankly, because you don't know how to. You don't know how to string words together. It sounds awkward. You're worried you're gonna mess up. Maybe it's this voice in your head telling you you're gonna do something wrong or say something wrong, which is going to lead to a negative result, a negative reaction, humiliation, embarrassment. So we're gonna talk about how to improve social skills using psychology. Now, when I say social skills, let's start with the definition. What, what do people think? Like, what, what does that mean? What, is, what do I mean by social? What do I mean by skill? So you can imagine social, I don't mean being by yourself. I mean being with at least one other person, right? Communicating, talking, exchanging ideas. And skill being just like any other skill, like a public speaking skill, like a music playing skill, like a tap dancing skill, you can improve it with effort. Right? So if we put an effort, if we are patient and we are persistent, the probability that we improve over time rises exponentially. Right? This is not magic. This is not woo woo or, or any other fancy. It's just pure black and white. If you put time into something and you're persistent and patient over time, the probability that you will improve is quite drastic. So you're sitting there going, all right, Dan, I want to improve my social skills for some reason, right? Now you got to think, what is that reason? Is it so I can meet people at parties? Is it so I can do better to impress my future employer? Is it so when I'm out with my friends, I can communicate my thoughts better. I can get my ideas across in a more concise and clear manner so that people follow me, so that people follow my train of thought. Because if you just keep talking for the sake of talking, well, you're going to lose people, right? People are just going to shut off. They're going to go, this guy's rambling on for too much. So you've lost their attention, right? We see this if we talk too slow. We notice this if we talk way, 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 way too fast. If we speak in a monotone voice. And I can't tell you how many professors I've had who lack some of those very, in my opinion, basic and fundamental skills necessary for talking to someone, let alone presenting in front of 100, 150 people. So here's what I would tell you. In your head, one of the best things that we could do is we could role play. I want you to think about that scenario that makes you anxious, that scenario in which you need social skills, right? Because if you're thinking about social skills, you're like, Daniel, I don't care about board game with grandma, all right? I can speak to her just fine. But all of a sudden, if my cashier is a cute girl at this grocery store, all of a sudden the cat's got my tongue and I don't know what to say and I can't even make eye contact. So the question becomes, how can we improve our social skills there? Here's what you do. You're gonna make some time out of your day, not just randomly throughout the day because 
I don't want you to overthink about this. So not while you're driving, not while you're at work, not while you're doing your hobby. I want you to schedule time in your day. 10 minutes is enough. Say, all right, from five until 5.10, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find a quiet place to sit down, okay? I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm going to envision the scenario which I need social skills. This might be walking into a party. Again, all those previous ones that I stated. Okay, so I'm sitting there, I'm visualizing, I'm seeing this happen. What now, Daniel? Why am I doing this? What's the benefit? What we want to do is we want to take those doubts, that negative self-talk, and we want to externalize it. Why? We want you to become aware of the things that you're telling yourself. And then we can start to look at them as, okay, is this an opinion or is this a fact? For example, let's say a lot of people, even before opening their mouths, they're thinking, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Are they looking at me? Are they judging? Are they looking at me? Are they judging me? Well, those thoughts, what are they going to do? The physiological responses to those thoughts are an increased heart rate, sweaty palms, your stomach starts to feel a little fuzzy. At an extreme, you could feel nauseous. You could feel lightheaded. You could physically start to feel uncomfortable and want to leave the scenario. So when you begin to think those things, we want to begin to challenge your thoughts and go, why is she looking at me? Do I look wrong? Is there something wrong with my hair? Is it my acne? Is it this? Is it? You, want, you, you want the first thought to be, we don't know why she's looking at me. And if you start thinking, oh my God, she's looking at me because of my acne. She's looking at me because of my acne. You don't know that. That is not a fact. That is an opinion. And that opinion, that narrative that you paint is going to add fuel to the fire of these negative thoughts, which in turn increase the anxiety over time. So you're sitting by yourself, you're envisioning this scenario, and you're thinking, okay, this person's looking at me. Immediately when you have a thought of, they're judging me, they're making fun of me, she's thinking about me as if I'm a loser, or my employer's, employer's already looking down at me, just catch those thoughts and go, where did that thought come from? Is that a fact or is that an opinion? That's the first thing we wanna do. now. Later on, this could be a whole video in and of itself about thoughts and beliefs and how they impact our behaviors and this and that. But for right now, it's too early. Right now, we just want to talk about becoming aware of thoughts that are detrimental to us. Detrimental in that the physiological symptoms that they give us. And in turn, if I feel sick to my stomach and nauseous, I don't feel like dancing. I don't feel like talking to someone new. I'm going to leave the party. And guess what happens when she sees me leave the party? She doesn't know I exist. Well, of course she doesn't, man. <laughs> Anytime you walk into a room and you see someone who you're barely attracted to, you feel sick and you leave. Why would anybody know that you exist? But what you don't recognize is, is that you did it to yourself largely, right? Or you made it a lot worse than it actually was. So we get back to the example. You think about the situation that you're in. You're at the grocery store or you're at a party. Let's keep it simple. Let's say we're at a party and we want to talk to someone who we're attracted to, okay? I want you to rehearse what that would look like. And to make it really, really, really easy, and a lot of people are gonna hate this, I want you to rehearse the worst possible situation that could possibly happen. Because people are gonna think about negative things, and I don't believe that looking at someone and saying don't think negatively, or don't think about it, because in my experience, it actually, it does the opposite. Don't think about a white polar bear. Did you just imagine a white polar bear, right? So you sit there and you think, okay, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? And I want you to reenact it. Like just either say it out loud or write it, journal it, or think about it. And you go, okay, the worst thing that could happen is I go over to talk to her on my way over there. I don't know, I trip and I fall, boom, I go down. Her and all her friends are looking at me. They all laugh. Then I stand up. As I say, hello, I've got something in my teeth. And I mumble so she can't hear me. And she goes, what? I don't understand. What are you trying to say? And then I feel judged and I feel like they're looking down at me. And now my face is going red. And they're probably noticing that my face is going red. So now my heart rate is increasing. Now I feel uncomfortable. I really want to leave. She's looking at me and I feel like I'm looking at Medusa, the girl with the bunch of snakes. Like I'm, I'm terrorized, like I'm frozen. I've got no idea what to say. And I'm fumbling and mumbling and she notices that I'm nervous and that makes me even more nervous. My friends, I'm role playing for you and I think my heartbeat just increased doing that mocking impression. And mocking I don't mean making fun of, but mock I mean 
uh, that artificial like recreating that that scenario now why why would you do that Dan if you know that makes me feel uncomfortable why would you have me envision that because my friends the way that we overcome something that makes us uncomfortable is we envision it we go towards it one step at a time now if you're extremely anxious and don't have any social skills I'm not gonna just send you to a party and say hey start mingling with people right that's a bit tough but if we can start and if people are interested in this check out a behavior therapy and check out or just behavioral approach Ivan Pavlov BF Skinner even Albert Bandura um, look at systemic I believe it's called desensitization or system desensitization and it's this idea of gradual exposure and what we begin to do is we go okay I want you to tell me about all the physiological symptoms that you were feeling as you were going through that mental thing in your head and you say well I would feel flustered and even now my heart rate increased and I did this and I don't feel very comfortable and I feel nervous I feel physically tense like I noticed that I clenched my fist as I was telling the story it's like okay good keep that in mind now, I want you to think about the best way possible, so it's the complete opposite, the best way possible that that conversation could go. And I know you can imagine it. And even, even if it's not you, if you're like, well, I don't have good social skills, Dan, it's not going to go well. Imagine someone who has phenomenal social skills, how would it go? Tell me how it would go. Whatever, whoever is the most confident, great social skills person in your life, or maybe a friend that you've seen, or someone who you know of. And then you might go, okay, well, the way they would handle it is they would look at them from across the room and she would notice him looking and he wouldn't cower away. And he'd look back and he'd kind of smile a little and he'd walk over, shoulders back, chin up, and he'd introduce himself. He wouldn't speak too fast. He wouldn't speak too slow. He would maintain eye contact. Maybe he makes a joke. Maybe he gives her a compliment. And he says something of interest that gets the girl to keep talking to him. Now he's introduced himself. His body language states that he feels comfortable and he's gotten a conversation going. A genuine conversation, mind you. Not just a scripted one, not just one where he's trying to force his way into something, but a genuine conversation with a stranger. And then eventually they exchange information, what's your name? And they learn a little bit about each other. And that's a win in and of itself. And you go, okay. What you've just done is you've, you've established what does it look like when we have strong communication skills versus poor communication skills, right? And anxiety plays a huge role in this. Now, I want you to imagine that you're that person who has amazing social skills. I want you to become an actor and act as if you have phenomenal social skills. What would you act like? What would you say to someone? How would you make conversation with someone? And now you're listening to this, you're going, Daniel, I pressed on this video so you could tell me how to do this, right? You have to tell me what are these great communication skills. Otherwise, why did I press on the video? So there's two things to that. One, I'll give you a few tips right now that you could use, but there's a caveat, okay? So here's a couple of tips. One, and a big thing is also setting. So setting, I mean, are you at a party? Are you in a bus? Are you in a classroom? Are you at a funeral? These are going to influence what behaviors are more appropriate versus less, not to mention appearance and the jokes that we make, the tone, right? If it's a very serious tone, if it's a very serious discussion and you go over there making jokes, that might not click very well, right? If it's a more serious environment versus a more casual, lean, lighthearted environment. That's the first thing. Also, culturally, it might be different. So over here in North America, I say, look, make eye contact. It's a very confident thing to do. It means that you're comfortable looking at the other person. There are certain cultures where it might not be the same. Holding eye contact for a while is actually odd. It's weird. It's strange. So maybe that's not the right thing to do. So keep context in mind, like environment, the situation, cultural expectations, social norms. But here's a couple of things. One of them is this, going up to someone and being quite honest. Quite honest is present yourself as you. So when you go over, you're going to introduce yourself. Hi, hello, howdy. That's an easy one. Two, state why you came over there. Because it's kind of strange, right? Like if a stranger comes up to you and goes, hello and you're walking to downtown, you're going to be weirded out. 
They could be good, bad, doesn't matter. It's a kind of an unusual thing to do for a stranger to approach you. And what's our first thought? What do you want from me? What's your agenda? What are you trying to sell me? What, what is it that you're after? So one of the first things you could do is you can come over and say, hey, give a reason why you went over there. Hey, look, I'm at this party with my friends and I can't stop staring at you from across the room. I didn't want to be creepy. I wanted to come over and introduce myself. That's something you could say. Or, hey, I noticed, uh, I was walking by, I heard something that you were talking about, the Lakers, I'm a huge Lakers fan, tell me more about that. Or, have I seen you around on campus before? My name is so-and-so, I think of blah, 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 blah. So, there's something, so there's a reason that you've gone over there. And now with the reason, you also have to be careful, right? You don't want to be crude, you don't want to be grotesque, you don't want to just... Men, I'm speaking to you right now. You do not just blurt out anything that comes to your mind, especially if it's just sexual or physically. If, like, if you're ever going to compliment someone, I do not recommend physical. I do not recommend physical. Do not compliment someone's form, someone's... Mm -mm, don't do it. If you're going to compliment someone, at least physically, a safer bet is to go clothes, if that's your route. Why? They, there's some personality in clothes. Clothes tells you a little bit about them, what they like. They had to choose the clothes that they wore but if you just go physical it's not gonna stick the landing with a lot of people so you go over there you introduce yourself you find a reason to get the conversation going the next thing is you have to show intent if you look uncomfortable if you look like you don't want to be there it, people can tell and if they're getting the the idea that you don't want to be there they start thinking well why is this person talking to me and then you go, well, Dana, what do I say? It's very simple. You're going to think about what you find interesting. You're going to think about what they find interesting and you find common ground. So tell me, what are you drinking? You're drinking a Heineken. Interesting. I love Heineken. That's actually one of my favorites. Or Heineken. I dislike Heineken. I think that's my least favorite beer ever. What I actually like is Corona. That's a lot better in my opinion. Now, it's not about agreeing, it's not about disagreeing, but it's about finding these topics. Oh, we're at a party, what are you drinking? What do you do? Where do you go? What do you like to do for fun? How do you know so-and-so? How, how did you get here? Cool, me too. So what would be interesting for that person to listen to? What would be interesting for you to talk about? Right? A very, very easiest thing you could do is ask people questions. When in doubt, ask people questions, let them talk. But you gotta be careful that it's not clunky. And here's why I'm so hesitant about saying all this stuff. I could give you a bunch of things to say. I could write you a script, say this, and then you're gonna say this, and then she laughs, and then you say this. And then, folks, the problem with that is that we have to be authentic. Meaning, if someone writes you a script and tells you what to say word for word, you're not being you. And if you're not being you, if you're copying someone else, oftentimes it comes across clunky. Why? You're not being your authentic, genuine self. So when it comes to social skills, when it comes to communicating, absolutely, look, there's certain things like having confident body language, not interrupting someone when they're speaking, asking questions about things that you find interesting and that you think they would find interesting. Being able to listen to something and when you don't understand you tell them that doesn't make sense don't just nod away yeah sure whatever you say you're pretty so i'm just gonna nod up and no what did you say i didn't understand that and then they repeat it to you and you go oh that makes sense so you go no I, I still don't understand what what's another way you could explain this to me and don't just agree with whatever the person says disagree be curious ask about things what is this why are you here hmm, tell me more about that you're into lacrosse I've never met anybody who plays lacrosse. What is that like? Oh, interesting. So lacrosse is a pretty big part of your life then, huh? Hmm, huh, I see. Showing up, asking questions, because it takes confidence to do that, means you're interested in people. Being an active listener, not interrupting people all the time as they're speaking. Pushing back and disagreeing when you actually disagree. That is so important. Don't agree to things you don't agree to. It actually, it looks more, uh, you look more respectable. These are all things that I don't want to say universal, but these are so important in a conversation. 
asking questions, listening, not interrupting all the time. Knowing when to tell a joke, when is it appropriate, when is it not appropriate. The, the type of humor, is it dark humor, is it lighter? As you're listening to someone. Knowing the different topics to talk about. And a lot of this is a trial by error, but the problem is you only get better by practicing and by doing this over and over and over again. One of the bad things about YouTube and podcasts is you can listen to a bunch of different podcasts about things to do, things to say, this and that. But at the end of the day, you have to put your own spin on it. And if you keep listening to to people like myself, you're going to try a lot of these things. And look, some of the ones that I said earlier, yeah, you can try them all the time, right? The things about being a good listener and being careful not to interrupt and pushing back and disagreeing with things that you disagree with and pushing people on topics that you don't understand. And... Having the courage to be vulnerable and to say, I I don't understand this. Could you explain this to me? And then you learn something new, which on the other hand, man, they just taught you something. And folks, teaching someone something feels really good. So that's another way to be a good conversationalist. And then later on, it's recognizing that once we get past the fundamentals, a lot of the stuff like jokes and mannerisms and which way to take the conversation a lot of it is just, it's, I can't tell you what to do, right? I can't tell you which joke to make because it has to be in a certain context and they have to say something. And if they laugh, maybe you say this, maybe you double down on the joke. If they don't laugh, maybe then you retract to go, oh, they didn't find that funny. Okay, note to self, don't joke about X, this topic with this person, right? And then you learn and then you get better over time. But really, folks, the cornerstone of social skills is practice. So you can begin by envisioning yourself doing this, talking to someone. You can write this down. In my opinion, one of the best things you could do, and it sounds awkward and weird and strange, but it's good for you. Take a video of yourself talking. I want you to see how other people would see you talking. For 60 seconds, I know it's going to be so hard and so strange for people, but really give it a try. For one minute, press the record button, look into the camera, and imagine you're meeting somebody at a party. And just start to, or whatever, or it's a job interview. And just start going through the motions. And this is a very good practice for when you're at the grocery store. Then start introducing some of these things. Right? There's a nice cashier or just a regular cashier you want to practice. Hey, how's it going? Going pretty good, thanks. How's the shift so far? Good, rock on. Those are my favorite kinds of shifts. Any plans for the weekend? You're going out to a party on Saturday? Me too. Where are you going? Watch us go at the same party. That'd be something, huh? Oh, I see. Cool, cool. I've never been to that area, but I've, I've heard about it. Interesting. If I see you next week, let, let me know how it goes. Sounds good? Awesome. All right. Take care of yourself. So, all of a sudden... What you're doing is you're, you're building, you're playing, right? But And I can't tell you exactly what to say because it takes two to tango. And you have to ping pong back and forth. But a very, very, very good way to start, in my opinion, is take a video of yourself and just start talking. And imagine what, what could they respond, different things that you could say. Imagine you meet somebody, you go, hey, how's it going? They say, great. And then you start, and then what would you say to that? Hey, how's it going? This person replies with great. You go, well, what makes you say that? Or that's awesome to hear. If you don't mind me asking, what's so great about today? And then they tell you something. And then you go, well, isn't that something? Tell me more about that. And then they tell you more about something. And you go, whoa, that's really neat. You go, actually, I'm having a pretty great day myself. And then practice when they give you an answer that, excuse me, you might not expect. So what happens if you're at a party or at work and you say, how's it going? And they go, not too good like hmm if i've only practiced with people who give me a positive response what happens when they give me one of those not too good what are you gonna say well that's great well now you can't say that right so then you get used to doing these different things and then in the video you get to look at your eyes you get to look at your mouth you get to look at the speed at which you're talking And one thing I want you to get extremely comfortable with, and this is so important, my friends, if you want to be good at conversations, you have to be good with silence. I have to be okay with posing a question. So tell me, what is it like being an engineering student? 
and then just pausing. And when you ask that question, either someone starts blah, 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 immediately or there's going to be silence for two to three seconds because they're thinking about what to say. And it's good to get used to just sitting in that silence. And then when they finish telling you blah, 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 blah. So I guess being an engineering student is kind of like being a medical student. Then you sit there for just a second or two. Why? Because I'm communicating to you that I took in your answer. If every time you're about to finish your sentence, I'm cutting you off, what I'm telling you is I am so ready to respond, what you're saying isn't really a priority. Whenever I'm having conversations with people, I always pay attention to this. If I tell you something and you respond immediately, did you grasp everything that I was saying? Versus I tell you something, hey, I noticed, you know, the other day, it was a while since I exercised and like my muscles got sore a lot faster. It's nuts how quickly the body forgets uh, how to move itself or it's how quickly the body can weaken, the muscles can weaken without exercise. And you sit there for just a second, a second or two, and you let that, that idea breathe. What you're telling me is, okay, I'm fully listening to what you're saying and now I'm going to respond. As opposed to, I'm going to wait till Daniel shuts his mouth so then I can tell him what I've been thinking about today. Right? So my friends, the key to getting good at social skills, seriously, is becoming a very good listener. Just to recap, being careful not to interrupt people. Disagreeing with people if you disagree. Telling people when you don't understand something talking about your own interests, trying to find out what the other person's interested in, and showing enthusiasm for what you're talking about. Because there's nothing worse than talking to someone and they're like, hey, yeah, I'm fine. How are you doing? It's like, first of all, you don't even want to be here. So you asking me how I'm doing is actually super disingenuous because you don't care. So just don't tell me how I'm doing it. Like, don't ask me if you don't actually care, right? But imagine if someone comes up to you and goes, Hey, it's so good to see you. So tell me what's been going on in your life these days. How do you feel? I'll tell you how I feel. I feel cared for. I'm like, hey, this person cares about what's going on in my life. And that doesn't mean you have to be artificial or, or like uh, different, but you have to show genuine interest in the other person. And if you're sitting there going, but Daniel, I don't care about other people. It's like, fair enough, dude. And look, you're not going to care about every topic and every interest of other people. But what I'm more saying is, if you care about an individual, okay, it could be a stranger and you want to engage in conversation, I want to figure out why is that thing so important to you? If you love hockey, look, I'm not a fan of hockey, but I recognize that you are. And I, I want to dive in depth. Why? What is it about hockey that you like so much? Tell me about hockey. Oh, you've been playing since you were eight years old? Hmm, I see. That's where you met most of your childhood friends? Ah, I see. So hockey is like a real, it's something that, that you've always found a unity in, conformity, friendship, trust, loyalty. That's what I'm hearing, huh? And they go, yeah, that is what you, that, that is exactly what it is. I go, oh, interesting. Well, speaking of loyalty, I can kind of relate. A few years ago, I was on the blah, 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 blah. And then you keep going from there. So my friends, I hope that was helpful. I hope you can use that information and get yourself into a bunch of new jobs and uh, a bunch of dates. Embarrass yourself a ton because it's all part of the game. I hope you enjoy, folks, and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.